Oh, brother, do we have a lot of news. And here's the deal. There's going to be even more news as the week goes on. We're going to talk about how do you deal with all of the players unexpectedly missing. We're getting into some dynasty content. We're taking a look at the Thursday night amazing game. It's a great episode, and we take your questions. Make sure you stay tuned. Like this video. Leave comments. We read them. Have fun. Tell your friends. And let's get you a fantasy championship this year. Hey, Foot Clan, if the holidays snuck up on you as Boom. well. Oh, <laughs> the holidays are here. It's time to get it right this gifting season. Brooklinen has perfect presents for everyone on your list. Maybe you're shopping uh, scents for a candle lover. Maybe you're grabbing a gift card for that gift card that keeps on giving. Ooh. Maybe comfort is what you're looking for this holiday in your gift giving um, Brooklinen's goal is to create beautiful, high-quality home essentials that do not break the bank. Maybe you've heard us talk about Brooklinen and those next-level comfy five-star sheets. They are very comfy. I am not joking. I bought sheets for our 13-year-old. He was jealous of mom and dad's sheets and wanted some Brooklinen of his own. And um, their lineup keeps getting better. Give the gift of comfort this holiday season and save while you do it. Go to brooklinen.com and use promo code FANTASY. For $20 off with a minimum purchase of $100, that's B-R-O-O-K-L-I-N-E-N.com and enter the promo code FANTASY for $20 off with a minimum purchase of $100, brooklinen.com, promo code FANTASY. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast for Wednesday, December 15th. It's a bit chilly this morning. Yeah, it's jacket time. Yeah, <laughs> we did it. In Arizona, I mean, I, I get that. Most of the country's like, what are you talking about? It's bin jacket time. <laughs> I uh, I wake up and sometimes I'm like, maybe I don't wear flip-flops today. I, I, and I still wear flip-flops, but I think it now. What We we were out, uh, we were playing some pickleball. Mm -hmm. Sport of uh, champions, kings, queens out there. Elderly. It's really, <laughs> it's really the most sophisticated of all racket sports. But literally, d d Jeremy's out there, Al Borland himself, and he's he's looking... And uh, what we're we're like full on winter mode, right? Like around the country, and we're seeing like trees just starting to get some fall colors. Yes, in the late in late December, he's like, "Oh, that tree kind of looks cool." But is it is that one tree? It was one. It was a single tree. It was the only non cactus in the area. But uh, we've got a lot on today's show. We've got news to talk about. COVID making headlines again. Who boy? Trying to time itself up for. Um, Given your playoffs a variant, I mean, this is this is a mess. And then we've got Thursday Night Preview. We're going to do a Dynasty download, cover some mailbag, got some buy-sell. I mean, that sounds jam-packed. Yeah, full show. Going to give you a lot of information today. They, they, they said it couldn't be done, that this much could be jam-packed. This is the club sandwich that they have to put the toothpick through. Oh, do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. That's a good sandwich. I what, love, what, what's your I love, take on those? Oh, I love a club. Now, do you go? You do have to break those up, though. You can't go. You can't fit that whole bite like a traditional sandwich bite in your mouth. If it's got, well, if you're a coward, <laughs> right? Well, it's a pinching. You have to. Yeah, you got to. You got to smush it down just okay. a little bit. That makes sense. But it must be a triangle. It must, right. That makes it a club. Yeah. <laughs> triangle. Yes, it must be cut a specific way. If you if you give me a half and you're like, it's a club. No, this is yeah. this is not a club. No, that's this a, a sandwich. This is a mutation. <laughs> Get out of here. A mutant sandwich. <laughs> uh, a few things at the top of the show I want to let people know about. If you are one of the unfortunate that did not make the fantasy playoffs, or maybe you want to amplify your fun towards this end of the year as you're in the fantasy playoffs, we do have, uh, you know, DFS is a lot of fun week to week, and... There's a deal on our DFS pass. It's $16.67 for the rest of the year. 
So I, I did so, not set that price. I don't know how that happened. That's, that's very specific. I think it's a percentage of the season is what happened. I see. We just see. chopped off the price. And so we couldn't do some rounding. No, look, I left this all in Andy Schneider's hands. Round that up to 17. Eight more weeks of DFS. So that ends up being two bucks a week to get in on the DFS pass. It's delivered for a lot of listeners this week and this year. Well, look, this week in the future and then this year in the past. I'm going to, I will let everybody in on a little secret here. Uh, I am clearly dominating our DraftKings Segment. competition mm. at the, on the Fridays. Mm. Uh, I may or may not see what they have to say in the DFS pass before I fully click in that lineup. So you can check that out, dfspass.com, if you want to play along for the remainder eight, uh, the remaining eight weeks of DFS. And you like get some friends together and shame each other. Oh, like it's we, a lot like of we fun. Do. Yeah, spin yeah. the wheel. And then we have uh, we'll be on Spotify Green Room later today, live at oh. 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. Mike calls it the party room. Yeah, because it is the party room. So you can listen on Spotify Green Room. It's always a good time. And what else do we have? Uh, we've got the Megalobowl playoffs are going. If you are in, go to megalobowl.com. We've got a list of everybody that is in the playoffs. You can see if you progressed or did not. Your matchup in your sleeper app, it's irrelevant. It's just points now. Um, so you can see if you're on that page at megalobowl.com. Basically, this last week, it was 124.2 points. If you scored more than that, you're in. If you Ooh. didn't, better luck next year. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, let's do some buy sell. Buy or sell, presented by Pristine Auction. All right, Mike, you might be dominating the DraftKings segment lately, but uh, you didn't dominate the buy sell this past week. I did not. Andy did. I uh, managed to get three right. That's a rarity. But uh, Russ Wilson, top 10 quarterback. He ended up quarterback eight, Hollywood. He, he snuck in. Hollywood. I mean, that's all it takes, Mike. Oh, I buy, agree. You I, buy, you sell. I agree. 65 receiving yards was the line for Hollywood. He went five for 41. Um, so the sell won that one. And then Saquon Barkley, 80 total yards, ended up with 95. Jason and I bought that one. This week's buy or sell. Oh, boy. I'm, I'm glad this name came up, Brooksy. Good job. Good job. Uh, Travis Kelsey, 70 receiving yards against the Chargers on Thursday night. The fantasy football playoffs. A heck of a game mm -hmm. to have just right there. Hopefully we get what we want, which is some action, right? The defense for the Chiefs has been... They need to, they need to cut it out. They need to get back to that early season form. Like I understand that the professional football team and Kansas City Chiefs fans, they are... Pleased with what is happening, mm. this trend here of three straight weeks of allowing your opponent to score nine total points, but the fantasy community will not stand for it. Well, they say defense wins championships, but it's boring. Not so, fantasy championships. So, well, yeah, that's that's true. Um, I will say this. They are expecting to be without Chris Jones yeah. on defense, okay, which will make true. a big difference. Uh, he's one of the stars of their defense. So, Justin Herbert, a little bit more time in the pocket to throw the ball. Maybe. maybe. And I'm sure we're going to talk about it momentarily, but Eckler looks like he's going to play. Travis Kelsey, buy or sell 70 receiving yards against the Chargers on Thursday night. The last two weeks, he bombed. In mm -hmm. fact, he lost his number one tight end spot, and he's got a five-year run. So, if he doesn't finish strong, it's over. The five-year run of Kelsey dominance is over, and we will have a different-looking fantasy draft season with tight ends next year. But in week three, he was seven for 104 against these same Chargers. What do you think? Um, I, th I think that Chris Jones makes an impact on Travis Kelsey. I think this game will hit the over. It's already got a 51 and a half point over under. It's an exciting uh, game that we hope has offensive output. And the Chargers aren't good against tight end. I'm going to bet on the talent of Travis Kelsey. This line is excellent, Brooks, because I could see a great game where he's got two touchdowns and 68 yards, but I'm going to buy the 70. I think that he will rebound and uh, be a big factor. Mike? I will buy uh, one because uh, it's the probability of Travis Kelsey. Is he really going to have three uh, poop games in a row? <laughs> I don't think that he will. And, I'll, and come on, we got this is, this is the time of the year. 
We need Travis Kelsey to come through. So this is not just something I believe he can do. I believe that he must do it. I'm going to sell it. Oh, no. You get out of here. I think I mean, he might score, but I think it's, you know, 70 yards. That's a great line. I'm going to sell it. James mm. Robinson. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. Top 20 running back against Houston. Uh, since week six, Houston's allowed the fourth most running back fantasy points per game, but James Robinson did jack squat last week. And I have to believe there the injury is a factor in what is going on. So I, you know, top 20, another spectacular line. Brooks, mm -hmm. Brooks is on these fire. These are great today. All three of these were so hard. It would have been an easy sell for me at like 12 or 15. I wouldn't. I would have bet against him. Top twenty. All of the hullabaloo going around Jacksonville. They're favorites in this game. They're at home in this game. I will buy it. I'm going to buy it as well. I I believe that he will get the ball more than six times. He still played on sixty four percent of snaps. Um, you know, and and like you said, there's hullabaloo. There's hullabaloo going around saying, why aren't you getting him the ball? And I think that that Did will... Did you say hullabaloo? Uh, heck of a lot of hullabaloo. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> the bear? Yes. Yes. So I think he this the squeaky wheel will get the grease. I think he will um, have a good game. Remember Rashad Penny just dominated against the Texans. And so I will bet on uh, James Robinson to be top 20. Not worried that the squeaky wheel has a, has a flat? A little worried. Yeah. A little worried right. about the So you're buying. The Mike, what are you doing? Uh, I'm going to buy as well. Triple it, it, buy. It wasn't just Rashad Penny from last week. Like the These teams played in week one. That was Trevor Lawrence's best game as a passer because you can actually move your offense against the Houston, Tex uh, Houston Texans. But did you guys catch the, the latest Urban Meyer? Oh, flub? no. Let me have it. Uh, he, like this came out a couple days ago. He was asked about Andre Cisco, uh, their safety playing more. And his quote was, you know, he's playing a little bit more. I believe I don't have the numbers in front of me. Mm. Can you guess how many defensive snaps that this player had? I'm guessing zero. The answer is zero. This guy has no idea what is happening on his football field. That's just an urban legend, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Like we all bought it. That guy. It sucks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's no one that's going to defend him either. Not a not a soul. I you know they came out and they said they don't want to be impulsive with their decision. Yeah, it's just not. you don't need to be. It's, no, it's not impulsive you're to like, let him go. You're like you, my toilet's clogged. I don't want to make any rash decisions here. <laughs> <laughs> my toilet's clogged. I'm, I'm going to think about what should I do here. Now, see, I can already hear the Twitter sphere going, this guy, his college resume. <laughs> it's a winner. Have you seen it? He's a winner. Have you seen his NFL resume? <laughs> <laughs> Stephon Diggs, buy or sell. Seven receptions against Carolina. Last two weeks, he was the wide receiver 37 and 38. He's only hit that mark in six of 13 games. Seven receptions, that's a lot. Uh, and I've had a hard time breaking down this Buffalo-Carolina game in my head because I have to make decisions on Josh Allen and – trying to understand the game script of this game. My concern with the game is that there's just, it's not competitive. You know, the line here, I think they're favored by 10 and a half. That's just off the top of my head. Yes, that is correct. So I'm worried about it not being competitive. So seven receptions is a pretty high bar. So I'm going to sell it. I don't think I'll hit seven. I, I think that Buffalo will mop the floor with, with Carolina, but I don't think he hit seven total receptions yeah the the line is good because he he can easily do that Emmanuel Sanders is out uh but Carolina they're good against wide receivers um you know top four right now fantasy wise and like you said the blowout could come so I'm going to sell alongside of you uh, sale alongside of you even Ooh. um and I I will say he has fewer than seven receptions to get to the blowout that means that Buffalo is prolific in the passing game because they're not going to run uh, so for That's those, true. for those reasons, I will, I'll buy the seven reception, even though it, that's a, that's a, there's a thin margin of error here for Stefan Diggs to hit that mark, but I think he can make it to seven. My fantasy team will be very thankful if he does. That was by yourself from pristine auction.com. Use the code ballers to get a $10 credit. 
news and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. The Chargers activated Keenan Allen from the reserve COVID list. Missed last week's game due to being on the reserve COVID list. He's on track to play on Thursday night. This is huge. Mm -hmm. Huge news for a team that needs every bit of their ensemble to compete. And that'd be the Chargers. Austin Eckler was limited on Tuesday's walkthrough. That's great news. Yeah, the indications are he's going to be in that game. Now, there's always going to be re-injury risk with something that is so, uh, I guess, recent, right? It's Sunday late in the game is when this happened. You're playing on Thursday. I would not be surprised if they limited his snaps a little bit in this game. I just don't know if they can. I mean, if he is available to them in a divisional extremely important game against Kansas City Chiefs. I mean, you you see the games. You watch, and it's like, oh, dang it. They wasted a play because they gave it to Joshua Kelly. It's like it always is just like, oh, great. You deleted a play out of your offense, and, and they see that, and they know that. But obviously the ankle could be an issue. I expect him to be a good fantasy option, though. Tyler Higby's positive test for COVID-19 has been deemed a false positive. Which is a little bit surprising only in as much as the rest of the entire team seems to have COVID. So right. you you had Tyler Higby who missed the game for no good reason. I don't understand the intricacies of their protocols and testing, but you would imagine we were talking at lunch yesterday. It's surprising you can't go out and get, you know, ten independent tests and if you test negative on all of them, you're back. But Odell Beckham, this was big news, placed on the reserve COVID list, tested positive. It is not a guarantee that he will miss the game on Sunday yet. Um, it will depend on symptoms and double negative tests before Sunday. He's certainly up against it. Yeah, I, I would say that the majority of time when this timeline, we've seen a player test positive, they, they usually miss that game, which means Van Jefferson looks like a, a pretty solid play to me. Just broke this morning. Oh, man. The Browns are in the thick of an outbreak. Jarvis Landry and Austin Hooper were added to the reserve COVID list on Tuesday. This morning, Baker Mayfield, their quarterback, Kevin Stefanski, their head coach, who also missed last year's playoff game due to being on this list, are both uh, back on it. And the Browns are missing a, a ton of offensive and defensive players. Like, I actually asked the question this morning. I was like, could they postpone this game? Could they, you know, Right now, there's no indication that, no. that that will happen, but you're you're missing tons of weapons on this team. The NFL, the machine is unlikely to care that for, for Cleveland that that this has happened. It sucks. Like it, that makes my heart is broken here for the Cleveland Browns fans. Of you're you're trying to make a playoff push, and something out of your control has gotten in the way. But they I mean, are playing was, the Raiders. Yeah, you're playing the Raiders, which. Okay, glass half full thing, but Case Keenum and Nick Chubb will try try and get that victory. Speaking of the Raiders. Yeah, speaking of the Raiders, Darren Waller, non-participant is what he was listed as for Goodness. Tuesday's estimated practice report. Uh, Foster Moreau limited. You're, you don't have a tight end option there probably outside of Waller and if he was back. Damian Harris, this is big news. You had the bye week for the Patriots. He left with a hamstring injury. He was listed as a limited participant. So, unfortunately for fantasy players, you, you're going to be in the boat where if Damian Harris plays, you're going to play him over Ramondre Stevenson. And you, you saw the evidence of why you would do that. Last time they were on the field, Harris had a, a ton of big plays. Christian McCaffrey was shifted from injured reserve to reserve COVID. That, oh. It makes no impact to your fantasy team. Double IR. And then uh, Gio Bernard was placed on injured reserve. Yeah, and I believe they're – I don't know if they signed Kenyon Barner, but that was the player they were looking at. I will say one more thing, which is something we did with some of our leagues. Last year when COVID was prolific and it was all the discussion mm -hmm. around how to handle it in fantasy leagues, um, this morning, you know, with all these bits of news coming out, at least in our main league, we're going to take the same approach with the COVID IR situation, which is that if a player ends up Going on the COVID IR, we're going to allow that player to be dropped, left alone. You can sign somebody else and then get that player back after they come off the IR. So just some flexibility. You're going into the fantasy playoffs and, you know, like the Tyler Higby situation was a nightmare. 
Mm-hmm. And there are, yes. there are going to be more nightmares coming. I, I tweeted it last week. Like, this is just, you can't stop it. Even if you roll your eyes at it at home, like this, it makes no bearing on the reality of the situation, which is COVID's going to affect these teams. They have protocols in place. When you test positive, you miss games, period. So you have to accept it and yeah. adjust. Yeah, and it sucks. So let's all, let's get together here and try and make it suck. Uh, the least amount it possibly can. And so just uh, like, let's have some, you know, uh, professional is not the word I'm looking for, just some, some competitive compassion here uh, for each other as we try to finish the fantasy uh, football playoffs. If you're playing a team that has someone put on, on COVID, they're already without a, they're going to be without a superstar. So right. just let them get a replacement. Yeah. What was the option for Higby managers last week? Oh, if you had been I compassionate, even, I can't even Blanton? remember. Yeah, Kendall yeah. Blanton. He put up like two for twenty nine. Yeah, I mean that's what you're giving. <laughs> you're giving your opponent two for twenty nine. It's the holiday season. Yes. Let them pick somebody up. Uh, that was today's news and notes brought to you by our friends at Sleeper. Make sure you grab the Sleeper app and join the Breaking Alerts channel. Mm-hmm. And before we get to the fun meat of the show, we want to thank today's sponsors, Helix Sleep specifically. I love Helix Sleep. My mattresses throughout my house are Helix. The the mattress I sleep on every night is wonderful, and it was it's wonderful because it's designed for me. It's designed for how I sleep. It's designed for my weight. It, you, you log on. You take a simple, easy quiz about how you sleep, how your partner sleeps, um, you know your 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 metrics, right? Uh, your height, your weight, and they really do find a mattress perfect for you. They have a Helix Plus, a mattress for plus size sleepers, which is awesome. Do you like it soft? Do you like it firm? Uh, medium? Um, they they really are great. If you're looking for a mattress, take the quiz. Order the mattress you're matched to. It'll come right to your door, shipped for free. You don't even need to go to a mattress store ever again. Just go to helixsleep.com slash footballers, take their two-minute sleep quiz, and they'll match you with a customized mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life. And Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash footballers. That's helixsleep.com slash footballers for up to $200 off and two free pillows. And Footland, uh, life is crazy right now. Tons of stuff is changing. But you know what is not changing? The future is technology. Like, this is where we are headed. And if you want a way to succeed, you got to learn how to code. And that's where Code Academy jumps in. Over 50 million people already know that Code Academy is the best way to learn to code. That's because Code Academy not only teaches you job-ready coding skills, but also helps you build unique projects for your portfolio, earn certificates, and even prep for technical interviews. We got a couple of professional coders here. And the, you know how they got this job in fantasy football? Because they learned how to code. Uh, we dabble from time to time in coding. And honestly, there it is a thrilling thing. When you figure something out, when you're when it finally clicks in your brain of how to produce something with code, it it is a really tremendous experience and very fulfilling. And Code Academy, they make it as easy as possible. All ages, kids. It doesn't matter where you are in your life. Uh, you could take their programming personality quiz to get tailored career advice, course recommendations based on your strengths. You can learn coding languages like Python, HTML, CSS, SQL, JavaScript. You can learn it all and land your dream job in web development, programming, computer science, wherever you want to go. Join over 50 million people learning to code with Code Academy and see where coding can take you. Get 15% off your Code Academy Pro membership when you go to codecademy.com and use the promo code BALLERS. That is promo code BALLERS at codecademy.com to get 15% off Code Academy Pro, the best way to learn to code. C O D E C A D E M Y.com, promo code BALLERS. <laughs> Thursday Night Breakdown. All right, we do have the Chiefs at 9-4 and four taking on the 8-5 and five Chargers. This game is awesome. Oh, yeah. Yeah, finally. It's in Los Angeles. You know, the Chargers could even up record-wise with the Chiefs with a victory. The Chiefs are road favorites because they're playing some good football. Uh, DraftKings Sportsbook has them minus three. The over-under is 52 points. Mm. Ah, this is great. L.A. would hold the tiebreaker. 
if yeah. they win this game. So they go into division lead then, right? The, yeah, this would be this is this is a massive massive game for both parties because both of these teams could still miss the playoffs. Um and whoever wins this game will have a, a real stranglehold on winning the division. So massively important and the Chargers won the first time around uh in a thrilling awesome 30 to 24 game where you had Herbert with four passing touchdowns. Uh, Mike Williams had a monster game. So hopefully there is more of this, but the defense for Kansas City has just been on a roll. Third against quarterbacks, fourth against running backs, 10th against wide receivers, ninth against tight ends. Their six-game win streak, here's the points allowed, 17, 7, 14, 9, 9, 9. Well, how many games is that? Five, you said? Six. Six-game win streak. Let's look at those matchups. So that goes back to Giants, right? Green Bay, Las Vegas, Dallas, Denver, Las Vegas. So a couple of those against the Raiders in there. Um, look, the, the hope here is that you don't get a very unfortunate surprise under the tree from the Chargers offense. That's the fear. Sure. The fear is that you go in with players that you, you relied on all year long. Almost nobody has been better than Justin Herbert this season at the quarterback position. Eckler's been a a, a game winner. Uh, Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, they've had their their moments this year. So do you have confidence in their in them having solid weeks to get you off to the right start? I do. Uh, I related a lot to the Buffalo Bills Tampa Bay Buccaneers game last week. Two great defenses where you could have either one shut the other one down, and it looked for three quarters like you did have the Buccaneers shut down the Bills. But in the end, I believe two great quarterbacks will overcome two great offenses. Um, and so I, I'm, I'm confident with all of the pieces here. I, I obviously can see the defense continuing to do what they've done, but I, I think Big Herb is going to overcome. And then it will be a back-and-forth fourth quarter to remember. Let me give you the fringe players, Mike, and you can tell me how you feel about them. And those would be Darrell Williams, the kind of RB2 of the Kansas City Chiefs. He's been in double digits a couple weeks in a row, limited touches. Mike Williams, who has been hot and cold, uh, certainly not reliable uh, of late. And then I guess I'd throw Jared Cook in there as a tight end. But what do you think about those guys? So Mike Williams, is he's in for me. I mean, he's kind of – he's pulling his own Christmas tree here with his rankings of, of green to red. But – because of what he can do, you're you're gonna play him, and he, historically he just he just torched them a bit ago. Even though the defense has has revamped, Daryl Williams for me, he's it's an enigma. It reminds me a lot of the the that Kenyon Drake stretch we had, uh, kind of in the middle of the season where I th it was like, it was like three weeks in a row where Kenyon Drake had you <laughs> desperately played him. And he gave you six or whatever opportunities. It turned into a big fantasy day. But three straight weeks here of Daryl Williams not being involved of eight opportunities, eight and five. It worked out for him the last couple of weeks, but I'm not counting on that uh, I, I would as, add, a, as a flex type play. I would add to that that where Daryl Williams has really had his success and made his mark is in the receiving game and the passing game. Mm -hmm. And the pass defense is, I think, better for the Chargers than their rush defense. 53% uh, of snaps, then 46, then 35. So it's actually gone down a little bit for Daryl. You'd hate to be holding the bag on a Thursday night and get your week off to the wrong start. I've been on the fence with him. He's on my bench right now. Uh, are Mike, you are you playing Clyde with full confidence? Is the question. He came through, yeah, uh, with with a huge performance, but it was also limited. Granted, remember what happened with this game against the Raiders. The very first play of the game was a defensive score for Kansas City. They got up to a huge lead. It only turned into thirteen opportunities for Clyde, but two rushing touchdowns. And only thirty five percent of snaps last week. Yeah, but, they, but you had a blowout, yeah, and, the, and the game didn't matter. So, so it's. We don't. I like. I, it. I expect that. I expect that it'll trend. The work will trend back up for Clyde this week. He's Chargers he's only defense had, struggles on the, against the run. Yeah, yeah, I mean it's it's a good matchup, a good over under. They're actually the favorite team, and he's only been outside of the running back two one time in his last six games. He's he's solid. I agree. Any other question marks in this game you guys want to discuss before we do a dynasty download? 
I mean, it just Jared, uh, Jared Cook. Do you are we going back? Or probably be- not with the full strength nature of the receiving game. I would agree. the The one thing we would be remiss is if Austin Eckler is a surprise inactive. Oh uh, right. yes, yes, That's right. Yeah. Who's the guy for me? It's Justin Jackson because I believe in the situation where Austin Eckler is gone. Now, obviously, they utilize their other backs differently when Eckler is there. I think Justin Jackson would be the Eckler replacement. He is for me. Uh, I'd be so terrified. Oh, yes, 100%. Because they will use them all. Like last week, obviously, when Eckler got hurt, it's not the prescription, right? You didn't set the game plan up, but it was like half the snaps are Josh Kelly, half the snaps are Justin Jackson. Yes, and I agree. It, it would be a very terrifying proposition to start on a Thursday your fantasy playoff run on the hopes that one of these Chargers running backs can come through. Uh, but I'm with Jason. Just, Justin Jackson would be my pick. He was he was involved more uh, like early on in the game where when Austin Eck was still fine. Justin Jackson was was still getting in there, get some get some carries. He kind of he's been that fill in before, and he would be the receiving he's just, back. He's just really genuinely not that good. And I and that's he is I a backup. Think, I don't think Joshua Kelly is. Well, no, good I, Justin Jackson is Eckler if you fell down the second you were touched on any part of your body. That is exactly what it is to me. Would you play Mike Davis or Jackson with Eckler out? Mike Jackson. Davis. Tie break us. You can tie break with a water bet. Sure. Really, that's just a really strange. I mean, no, that would be a weird it, it would yeah. also be very difficult. Hypothetically because... speaking. No, we can't do it. <laughs> we'll wait to hear on Eckler. But he should be back out there. And, and you, you know, if he got you here, you play him and you hope that he's healthy. He's a tough guy. Take your Thursday night players out of the flex, though. If yes. you're playing these players, this one's huge. I I made this mistake last week because oh. on th- it, you don't think about it with tight end. Unfortunately, I had I had to. <laughs> you play, don't normally play two tight ends. Yes, Pat Fryermuth and T.J. Hawkinson. And on Thursday, we we thought Hawkinson was playing, and so I didn't move him out of my flex. It's like rookie mistake. Move your players out of the flex into the regular slots if they're on Thursday and sim- same thing on Saturday there's two Saturday games this week yes if they're playing and they're in your lineup move them in so so important this week because you might lose your main players at any moment I have refreshed the news and I'm just waiting to see who the next player no, is now you, you've got more so now John Ross is on the COVID list and Matt Ioannidis the defensive lineman for the Washington football team in the last 10 minutes so you are just you're up against it. Mm-hmm. Let's talk Dynasty. Dynasty Download. Okay. I forgot about okay. that. I did too. If you're not watching, <laughs> we do have a we have a video drop there. And uh, I forgot we, we continually modify Mike's appearance in that drop. Yeah. I, so now I, you got a big uh, Christmas beer. I was looking beer. jolly. So uh, today we are going to play Who Am I and then discuss the dynasty outlook of the player revealed, okay? And so we're going to do it a little different today. And I'm going to give you a clue. You you play with us at home, okay? okay. I'm going to give you a clue, and you can choose to lock in your answer. And I'm talking to you, Mike and Jason, anytime you want. But you're locked once you decide. So we'll see how early you can lock it in. Uh, clue number one, this is my seventh NFL season. Oh, I'm locked in. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you got all the uh, seven-year players memorized. Yeah. Well, You're of a course. genius. Okay. Yeah, I'm not locking in there. All right, the second clue. Brooksy, do you want to give it to me? I don't know what you're doing in here. Uh, over my first six seasons, I averaged 118 targets for 75 receptions. 1,034 yards in six touchdowns. All right, I am locking it in. Man, really? Yeah. Over my first... I'm going to be wrong. Don't don't get me wrong. Just, uh, six seasons, I averaged 118 so, targets, 75. So 75 receptions. Those are pretty solid wide receiver numbers. Or pass I, I actually, numbers. I actually have one. I have one. I'm going to lock in two. Oh, man. I'm going to give it a shot. Okay. But you can play along at home. We won't reveal quite yet. And then uh, clue number three. 2019 was my only top 10 wide receiver finish. But I've been a top 24 wide receiver in five of six years. So you are a wide receiver. Can I unlock? 
<laughs> no, no. <laughs> You're locked. Brooks really wanted you locked in. Oh, man. All right. Well, okay. So, so, so 2019, so a couple years ago. Do you right. want to share your guest that you're now uncomfortable with? I my original guest was Alan Robinson. Okay. Um I I think he's about those first two, but he has to have been his monster year was was a top you know, he was what the wide receiver it had to be top 5 it wasn't, and year. it wasn't 2019. I have locked in. Okay. All right. Okay. You're you're a one clue behind me. Yes, yeah, so I've I've locked in at clue number 3. All right, I'm a I'm a clue two lock here. Uh, fourth clue. I was once traded mid season and still remain with my second team. I would like to. Can unlock. I unlock my clue? <laughs> my mine was actually Tyler Lockett. That's who I had. Yeah, to. dang it. All right, all right. So we're wrong. Final now clue. now we can all figure it out together. Do um, you all have another guess now with that clue? Once traded mid season and still remain with my second team. Well, he, that takes away Brandon Cooks. That takes away Odell Beckham. Um, I'm thinking of of mid season trades yeah. here for the wide receiver position. Oh, Rob, I Robbie was yeah, I, I not a trade. I've got my guess. Do it, my, go no, for it. Go um, for it. Amari Cooper. Ooh, Ooh I like it. Yeah. What's, the final clue is that I have an audio drop on this show. <laughs> It is then Amari. Is that the answer? Cooper. Yes. All it is. right. Twenty-seven and a half years old. Let's talk about the dynasty outlook, twenty twenty-two and beyond. This Obviously, is... the number one on this team right now in dynasty is Ceedee Lamb. Yes, that is locked. He will be there for a long time. And redraft too. It's not just. Di- right. I mean, he is just the better fantasy option. Michael Gallup, he could come back, but it's very likely he'll move on. Um, probably wants a little bit more of the spotlight that has been absorbed by CeeDee Lamb and Amari Cooper. So Amari Cooper is currently 27 and a half years old. His contract situation, if you recall, he was the $100 million man. Now moving forward in 2022, should Dallas choose to get out of the contract, it would be a $6 million dead cap. I don't think they will do that next year so i would project him to be a dallas cowboy do you guys disagree no, no i i he is locked in they they love him they paid him a hundred million dollars for a reason he hasn't done anything on the field to say he is has lost it or is is not great just because he's been overtaken by cd lamb i think this is what they want they want that one two and the salary cap is going up leaps yeah, and bounds lot, going yes. forward so i don't think they're going to be in cap um you know purgatory so to me, the contract is my favorite thing about Amari Cooper's future. He is in prime position to be the the dynasty world's next Adam Thielen. Amen, brother. <laughs> because he will be undervalued due to age. He will be undervalued due to CeeDee Lamb. Jason loves Amari Cooper so much. And he is reliable. He has a nose for the end zone. He will be in Dallas and... He will probably outperform any draft position for the next four years, it's, three years. It's a it's a hundred percent accurate. I really believe you've nailed the comp there. And if you think about Adam Thielen, if you could have traded for Adam Thielen going into his age twenty eight year, you know what I mean. You you would have people are trying to get out. Okay, we're worried about when when are you going to age out. Um, you would be very happy with, you know, the three seasons of Adam Thielen. Sure. So I, I really I really like that comp. Where where would that put but, him as a startup like if you were drafting a startup dynasty, is he in the top twenty wide receivers? I don't think so. Let me ask you this question. So you would have been happy with Thielen at that age, but are you happy with Amari Cooper this year, Jason? You draft he was one of your guys that you were targeting. You loved him. Week one? That looks sensational Best as he wide was, receiver as he was the, the number one wide receiver. He pulled the Darren Waller of week one. But followed that up with two massive, massive bust weeks where he put up 24 yards and 26. The following two weeks was a top 24 guy. Bust. Number four. Bust. Bust. Then he's. I'm not going to hold the games where he's out against him, but he, uh, he is the wide receiver 25 on the season, but he is... 
he's hurt you and your team a lot this year. Yeah, the the way that it's come this season has not been good for those no. who drafted him. As as someone who drafted him, it, it certainly did not work out. But I am happy with what I've seen from Adam or from <laughs> I want to call him Adam Thiel from Amari Cooper on the field. He has looked good. He's getting open. He's scoring. the The issue and and this will change year to year is. The change this year was how good the Dallas Cowboys defense has uh, gotten, and and maybe because it's on the back of you know uh, Diggs and, um, and Micah, yeah, maybe that young core. The defense is going to be great for years to come, but I I still think Amari Cooper. I mean, his last seventeen games, he has a consistency rating of a B. He's still very good for wide receivers. In terms of games played, if he plays the rest of this year, he will have one hundred and ten games uh, on the resume that's behind only DeAndre Hopkins and Randy Moss at age 28 so before turning 28 110 games played that's a lot of games obviously he's had injury concerns you know this year he had the COVID and then coming off of COVID and he had quarterbacks and moving around well, coming so. into the season he also had the uh, uh what was his injury over training camp was it a ink well, I thought it was a foot situation uh but so with Amari Cooper now, having just laid everything out here, are you holding, trading away, or trading for Amari Cooper? I would, I'd be willing to trade for in the off season. Okay. Likewise, and hold if you have him. I, I wouldn't be trading him away because, like Andy said, I think he will be undervalued. Not necessarily massively, just a, a little bit. Some of the burns from this year. Yeah, the burns from this year and the uh, hype on the number one wide receiver in town who is awesome, my guy C.D. Lamb. Yeah, I, I think I'm willing to trade for him just up, up the appropriate trade cost of he's – I don't think he can be what he was, which was a, a, a top ten. To me, that's not realistic for him if, if, as long as C.D. Lamb is in town. But a, a solid top 30 wide receiver who can give you spike weeks. Would you trade – I assume you'd trade Adam Thielen for him, just due to age. Oh, for sure. Age, yes. Right? Yeah. Okay. Um, let's do some mailbag. 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 Yeah. If you have a question for the show, go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Click the Submit a Question button. You can also dial the voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. Let's start with a voicemail. Hey, ballers, I have a question for the first week of playoffs at tight end. Would you go with Pat Frymers or Noah Fant? Thank you. Mm. Noah Fant is – he will be an interesting discussion this offseason as well. He is, he, he's not worth starting. I, I know who I wouldn't go with. <laughs> <laughs> and it's Noah Fant. I mean, the matchup isn't great for Pat Fryermuth. I think he probably needs a touchdown, which he's – been great at to be you know good for fantasy but Noah Noah fart has been oh, just no. I mean he's irrelevant the whole passing game is irrelevant for the Broncos and they're they're so good at running the ball with uh, you know Gordon and Javante that um what is Noah fan the sixth option in that offense and and he's even competing with Aguabanon at tight end so yeah I'm I'm it's definitely uh, the muth is loose here all right, Twitter question from Kelly. It's a good one. Is it customary to lock non-playoff teams for making any mm -hmm. ad drops uh, if there is a consolation playoff? I am in leagues where this is very common. I mean, it, it, it makes sense on one level, right? You lock out teams that aren't in the mix. And um, I'm, I guess I'm curious how you guys feel about that. I, I think I know your answer, but... It, it comes up every single year. Um and it, I feel strongly about it in different leagues. Like, if you're in a dynasty league, no. It, you should not lock. Like, you cannot um, lock. Who is, uh, he's, his name is gone now. The, the Lions running back. Craig Reynolds. So, out of nowhere, this running back shows up. And because my dynasty team didn't make the playoffs, like, you think I shouldn't be able to <laughs> add him? What, I, what I are you have pointing to, at, I, Jason? We're a candid show. I mean, the moment you said Craig Reynolds' name – 
Jason went from engaged to this conversation. <laughs> he went to Adam into oh, into moving on the key. Will be and I looked at I looked at Jason's <laughs> face, and I knew I saw the keyboard moving. I was like, I know exactly what's happening. Go like, put a claim in. I looked at the clock and said, Oh, our waivers and, have not read yet. And honestly, like, chance that that he becomes something for fantasy. I mean, so so small. But in a dynasty league, you 100% have to take that chance. You so need, that's a guarantee. You're he, locking. Yes. You're not locking in a yes in a dynasty. And this, I would say the same exact thing for a keeper. Like 100%. The, the keepers, there's still four games of football to be played. Now, before the extra week, that was 25% of, of the season. That is a huge amount of time for these players. Players break out at this time, and that turned into – that, that go from a waiver wire wonder at this time into, holy crap, I have a keeper for next year. Let So if you're in a keeper league, absolutely do not lock people out. And if, if you want to have the rule, it's just a complete normal redraft. If you want to have the rule, there's no... Uh, Non-playoff there, teams. There's no financial incentive for a team on a week-to-week -week basis. There's nothing to be gained by winning the, the toilet bowl. Okay, fine, lock people out. But to me... Why make it easier for the? I don't. I don't this isn't. It's, this isn't the NFL. This is fantasy football. This is so much different. The rules of this game are all inclusive of this game. And I, if I'm out, I'm going to sabotage. That's that will bring me joy this holiday season. Uh, to tr to try and get in there and add players. It's this isn't how everyone feels. This is just that's how I play it's, the game. It's not just a negative though. It's not just sabotaging. I think there is value. You know, if you're if you're in a league that just allows it, right? Like, you know, you you've got a consolation uh playoff or bracket or toilet bowl. If you're playing for anything, you should have access to the waivers. But let's say it's just a normal redraft league. Right. You're not playing for anything. It is a value to you to continue to set your lineups make waiver moves, make transactions, and pay attention to what's going on for your knowledge of what happens next year. There is a month mm. of football left. It really makes a big difference. I don't agree. You're wrong. <laughs> I'm just saying – the. I'm saying I, I remember I, making I mean, that change in me. It's playing pretend, though. Like, you you are playing pretend. And it's, it's one thing to come up and have an aspirational goal of, like, you're going to take it as seriously. But the truth is, is if it's a full redraft with nothing significant to play for – I am in favor of locking out non-playoff teams because I think all the playoff teams should compete for those players. It's oftentimes, you know, you get into that situation with the non-playoff teams, you know, maybe they got a vendetta against one guy and so they go attack that one player. Maybe they, you know, they, there's just too much murky ground in my opinion to put them on, like set your roster shirt, go through the motions, make sure you're paying attention to the news. We always say that. But when it comes to the waivers in a pure redraft, I am of the opinion, which is different than, than Mike's, that that you should lock non-playoff teams if there's no meaningful thing to play for. I'm 100% fine with that. If there's nothing meaningful to, to, to play for, have your league lock them. I'm fine with that. What I said was if your league does not have you locked, it is a value to you to pay attention to what's going on. I know that personally because way back in the day, you know, 15 years ago, I, if I wasn't in the playoffs, I just signed out. I just was like, I'm done. Um, obviously you're listening to the show, so you're, you're either in the playoffs or you've already chosen to keep up with uh, football and that, and that's great. But I'm just saying when you check out of the last month of the season, it makes a big impact on your drafting ability the next year. So paying attention to waivers will be helpful for you. And you know, I don't, I don't play the vendetta game. I don't, I'm not trying to block people. I'm just trying to keep up with what's going on in the NFL so that I can be a better fantasy football player. Absolutely. Uh, ChristmasFootball.com. It's happening again this year. Oh, That's right. baby. Um, you can go to ChristmasFootball.com and, and – And check all that, that out. That's uh, right. All that so Christmas much football. Inf information there. Uh, Twitter question from Dylan. Zeke or Javante Williams in a half-point league this week? That's a great, it's, a, it's an amazing question. <laughs> Javante's been the running back 8-1 and 8 oh, in the man. last three weeks. Has Cincinnati – has him at home. Uh, oh. You know you know he's going to get about 50% of the snaps. You know he's going to get 15 to 20 opportunities. And the thing is, Zeke will probably see 
65% of the snaps. Like This isn't the Zeke of the beginning of the year where he's in the 70s, sometimes uh, nearly 80% of the snaps. Like He's been the, at exactly 64% yes, for three straight weeks. Since the injury, his snaps have, have trended down into him being a in a full timeshare. And Tony, Javante. Tony Pollard was out last week. Doesn't matter. Didn't matter. No. They they still limited Zeke. Oh, he was hurt. Still, lim- I, that's what I'm saying. But even with the true backup out, they still limited uh, Ezekiel Elliott's snaps. So both guys are in a timeshare. Zeke's on the the correct side that you want for fantasy. But right now, Javante is just the better player. Yeah, so I, I'm going to play him. They're both in a timeshare, and one of these guys looks absolutely outstanding when they touch the ball, and the other one looks injured. So I I. Th- even though the matchup is great for Zeke, I, I agree with you, Andy. I, I would go Javante. They'll both have 15 touches. Who do you want to have 15 touches? Javante. Right. Yeah. Have you seen the uh, the broken tackle numbers no. for, for Javante? Yes. Uh, oh, I, I thought you were going to say for Zeke because I was, I was, oh, I'm trying not to look at that. No, I uh, I was trying to pull it up from PFF real quick, but I can't find it. He's Essentially, he is neck and neck with Jonathan Taylor in terms of broken tackles. Except he's seen way fewer carries. Like Javante is legit, and he is the player that we thought he could be coming out of college. Yeah, and and, and Melvin's been very good as well. Yes, they're Melvin, both, they're yes. both good starts this week. It's a good follow up question here from uh, Ben Pierce on Instagram: Javante or Clyde? Yeah, I'll play Javante. Mm. Clyde has been touchdown dependent the last three weeks. He has, but he has the Chargers. The Chargers run defense. Yeah, I mean it's a it's a it's a good debate. I think you. I I don't I, think you're going to go wrong with either guy. I think I lean Javante, but if it was Zeke or Clyde, it would be Clyde. I would love to not answer Javante to any of these. He is my <laughs> playoff opponent this week. Oh, congratulations! But uh, I'm. I'm never been a big bigger Melvin Gordon fan than this week. <laughs> we have a, a little bit of breaking news. Oh, not, come not, on. A, not enough that I'm going to hit the button. Uh, Rex Burkhead for the Houston Texans will be out. So if David Johnson is still on your waiver wire, he's worth a speculation ad. Uh, if Royce Freeman is on your waiver wire, which the answer to that question is yes, <laughs> Royce Freeman is on your waiver wire. Uh, but after Burkhead left last week, Freeman saw a whole bunch of targets. David Johnson will be back. If yeah, it's so if if D, if DJ's back, he would be the pickup and the play. Um couple other bits of news. No Lamar Jackson at practice today. Also, Tony Pollard did return to practice. Ooh. So I don't know if Pollard is going to enter the I'd take a chance to play him category this week against the Giants, but I don't think I would. No, no. Probably that that news probably just doesn't matter that much no because even without him Zeke saw 64 percent of snaps mm-hmm. so um you guys want to do one more yeah how about uh Instagram question from Brandon will there be value in the Eagles backfield or is it too messy that is a tremendous question um do we have a Miles Sanders update no I've been checking um nothing since he exited early in week 13 right yeah they had the bye week i mean it that's step one is is miles sanders there uh, back from the injury if if miles sanders is back that Boston va- scott jordan howard that Kenneth value Gainwell. will be very difficult to identify and i think you'll be you'll be spinning the wheel of of does it land on your guy oh, actually quick update for oh. two minutes ago. oh um Two minutes ago. Nick Sirianni says uh, Jordan Howard and Miles Sanders are trending upwards for Sunday. So the answer to this question is yes and yes. There will probably be value here, and yes, it is too messy. Uh, I'm personally not confident in where to put my roulette piece. You Mike know, Davis like, or, a, or an eagle running back? Ooh. Well, do, Mike Davis has become the bar this week. Yeah. That's a – Pretty low bar for me. I'll take an eagle running back. Okay. I would be, David Johnson. David Johnson or an eagle running back? David Johnson. Okay. Okay. Oof, that's <sighs> tough. Do you want to sing it? <laughs> no. No, no, no. 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 You earned the song. Right. You can't in Houston. All right. That is it for today's episode of the show. Starts of the week and the matchups tomorrow. 
Very excited about that game tomorrow, too. It's going to be football time, I hear. That's the rumor. It will be. Join us in the party room on Spotify Green Room later today. See you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.